part two, uh, changing up my front calipers. The old ones, which were used, were pretty beat up, as you can see. Uh, they were starting to stick. And uh, I think that's part of, the, part of the problem with my front brakes that I'm trying to do a burnout, just not holding very well. I've wanted to put new ones on for a long time anyway. I'll keep these just as spares and rebuild them if I need to. I won't throw them out. I got new stickers, but they are definitely not the same size as the old ones. These ones are pretty big. And the new ones are pretty small, but whatever. Over on the Lincoln, so, uh, runs, obviously, if you see in the last video, it ran really, really great until the oil spewed all out of it. So underneath uh, the car, kind of just above the oil filter, uh, or the oil filter housing actually, there is a plug that was missing out of the uh, filter housing. So when we were starting it, and it built up great oil pressure, uh, it all came rushing back out. So I guess when the engine builder uh, rebuilt the engine and, and put it all back together, uh, didn't put that back on, didn't know if it went back on, so we found it the hard way. Uh, after that, plug that up, put some oil back in it. Uh, I had to figure out something with the coolant temperature sensor, so we actually got it plumbed in just down there uh, with some hose, uh, an adapter, clamped it on, should be good to go. We can fill it up and actually run it. Uh, I didn't get to show in terms of the holly, just how nice that is. So I'm going to turn the key on. Kind of helps if I uh, put the battery back up. So got to keep disconnecting the battery because there's no doors on the car. So everything interior lights stay on until you do so. All right. So, to reach in here, to reach around. All right, so it's a pretty healthy prime there for a couple of good seconds. Uh, so this was actually really easy. So when you first turn the system on for the first time, uh, you go to Wizards. It's going to ask you a whole bunch of set of questions. It's pretty straightforward. So uh, you just Select the type that you have. Next, it's going to ask you how many cylinders, six, eight, four, whatever you got. Next, then uh, ignition type, so coil or ignition box, uh, points, next, or, or no control. Um, it will ask you if target idle, which I had to readjust. I originally had this on uh, to about 800, which was quite high. Um, so. Oh, thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, once that was done, we started to roll it over, and it uh, it fired up pretty pretty effortlessly. So let's see just how well it starts over now. Just as I don't really have the battery on there too great, but we'll see. A little cough there. Might be a little too low. There we go. Gonna jump back on the Trans Am and uh, yeah, for much of my brakes, I didn't get to really comment too much in terms of the turbo kit. So when I get it back down after doing the, the calipers, I'll show you. Uh, I've really heat soaked this thing pretty good. Uh, so the clear coat already has started to discolor on it, but you know what? I'm going to heat wrap the exhaust just because I want it to be as cool as possible under the hood. And that's the only sure way to do so. So heat wrap it, uh, spray paint or heat treat that also. And after that, I've got to get some better fans, uh, some 
to rally fans or something high flow and kind of keep that thing cool. So let's finish up the calipers and I will wrap this up. All right, I'm uh, just playing a little bit with the uh, boost controller for the new turbo because I'm kind of got a feel for it now. Um, turning up the sensitivity so on the top end it barely drops down a bit but it could be just me when I'm starting to lift off the shift. Uh, so I got the sensitivity just touched up a little bit. Um, did a couple little small pulls earlier and right now just kind of waiting for the temperature to come down a bit and then uh, we'll try setting number six. This is my top level and I don't know if I'll get into full full boot like leave my foot into it long enough. But we'll see how it just, how it kind of feels. drive with the uh, new turbo um, just topped up gas I uh, hope everything goes well
up high. So here's a good example of me rolling to boost. So I was on the highway. I think this was a fourth gear pull. Uh, I was already cruising at 120 uh, RPM at around like two grand. And so press play here. So a coolant temp 216, which I do want to bring that down some. So they start to roll in. Downshift. Just really good throttle. Let's see how boost comes up. All right. So we're right at this point at about 4,400 RPM. I'm at 19, 20 pounds of boost, uh, which is pretty quick considering I around the pull just at about 3300 and for how long it holds this 1920 pounds is the question so let's press play again 020 19 holding so 19 still going I'm at 5600 rpm now 18 pounds so it's starting to it's starting to taper off I just backed off there and it just started to drop off at 17 uh, at about 6 50 100 rpm um, you'll notice look, as well so kind of roll back in terms of uh, intake temp so I am running water meth So let's go about here. So I'll press play again. Let's see. Fourth gear is pretty hard, so it does generate a lot of heat, obviously. So I'm running 50 50 water math right now. So we're watching it boost come up, comes up again. So I'm on the throttle, full throttle, 100% TPS. Boost hits, hits hard. So temps start to rise at about five grand. So you can see it kind of does this as it uh, trickles up there. It's still plenty safe. 28 degrees is rather good. It's when you hit peak or just after peak. So you see it's dropped up to 35, 38. When I let off is when now it starts to keep up. And that's when heat starts to soak into everything and uh, takes a little cool back down. So it's rising there, 45. I'm already way off the gas. Speed's coming down. When you start to notice that coolant temple starts to increase as well, everything's getting hot. Intake tap is dropping. Now, after repeated hits like that, my coolant temple will stay at like 220, 230, and uh, take quite a sweet time to get back down there. So, my next test will be to pull my hot side back off and uh, rewrap it. So with the ceramic coating, this is definitely a lot better than it was for sure. I'd be sitting at 230 nonstop at this point for sure. Um, so I want to take them all back off, wrap it, uh, and I'll spray it with the Thermatech 
uh, wrap spray that I did last time. That did prove to help me quite a bit for a long time before it started to get really brittle after a couple of years. A uh, new turbo blanket, because my old one was, was pretty torn. And then uh, we'll, we'll try again and really see just how much that number improves. So my resting uh, temperature before I start really beating on the car is what I want to bring down probably about, you know, 10, 15 degrees. That as I roll up into boost, I'll hit maybe a max of 220, 220 or so, and not really cross into the 230s. Um, and a later pull that I did, I hit that 230 mark, and it took quite a while before it cooled back down to a point where I feel comfortable to do another rip at uh, any considerable amount of boost above 15 pounds. So in terms of the exhaust housing, so I am noticing for sure increase in uh, boost response. So as you noticed before, from about 3,300 or so RPM, from 33 to 43 within that thousand, I've hit max boost and it carries out from four to five, per about 55 and holds before it starts to taper off. Um, way better than, than the previous turbo. So the on three, uh, my boost controller settings were pretty jacked up to make that on three work the way I wanted to. Uh, I've had to dial back my controller now and I'm noticing also with the new exhaust housing, I'm hitting overboost. So either my wastegate's just not up to snuff now with this uh, amount of flow um, and where it's positioned as well, just to control boost. Uh, it, it's spiking and hitting max uh, hard, which is fun. But uh, if I hit overboost, uh, it will regularly boost and, and really yank it back and yank it back and then uh, reapply and hit it again and kind of modulate uh, boost response on the top end. So if I can rectify that also with temperature um, and keep having from pulling timing, the car on the top end will, will be fantastic. And for what I use it for, mostly street and the occasional track time, um, that's my goal. So for me, is the exhaust housing worth it to go from the 0.96 AR to 1.25? Absolutely. Uh, boost response laggy. Not if you have a good boost controller and a good setup. I don't think it will be. Uh, I think only going bigger will be better. So there you have it. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. I'm going to try to start doing more of my Friday night uh, cruises and see what I run up against. Um, right now, the temperature being relatively cool out at night, it's great boost weather right now. Uh, the streets aren't exactly quite the temperature I want for the tires, but it's holding pretty well uh, right now. So that'll be it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.